Hi and welcome to the Azam Sharp channel on YouTube. I'm your host Mohammad Azam with another screencast and we're going to talk about GCD which is the Grand Central Dispatch. If you have not looked at, if you, if you have not watched the previous screencast, I highly recommend that you do so. Um, in this screencast I'm going to talk about grouping or adding kind of like a dependency uh, in the Grand Central Dispatch concurrent operations. So let's check out this example. Uh, we have an array, as you can see, and uh, I can simply, uh, you know, go through the array. Wow, this is uh, really lagging right now. Um, so I can go through the array, or I trade, I trade through the array, and I can say self, um, wow, do something intensive, and I can pass in whatever like uh, a number so I can say number okay and of course uh, in the end maybe I want to display the array so I'm just gonna say display array and I'm just gonna pass uh, the array itself okay um, of course this is uh, the regular thing I mean it's uh, going to execute the for loop is going to execute uh, three times and it's going to do uh, some sort of intensive operation. If we want to do this using uh, dispatch queues, we can easily do that. We can do this in, uh, an, in an async uh, manner. So we can say dispatch QT and this will be our queue and we can simply get a global queue which is a dispatch um, Q uh, priority default and then using this Q we can do some sort of a dispatch operations so we can simply say dispatch async the name of the Q and uh, we can pass in this uh, block so this will be done on a concurrent or a separate thread and uh, can simply do this and all works well right so if I run this now you will see that uh, well actually it called display array first and uh, do something intensive do something intensive do something intensive and maybe this is not what we want we we want this whole thing to complete before calling the display array and right now what it is doing is it fires up these things in a concurrent uh, you know uh, calls and immediately returns which actually leads to calling this method uh, display array instantly so how can we add a dependency or how can we say that we want to wait for this whole block to uh, to finish and only then call the display array. So that can be accomplished by using the dispatch group. So I'm just going to say dispatch uh, group T and we are just going to create a dispatch group and instead of dispatch async we can simply say over here uh, dispatch uh, group async we are going to pass in the group name and we are going to pass in the queue and then of course uh, the the block inside the block we are going to do the same thing we are going to call self do something intensive we are going to call the number okay still it's not really going to wait at this point because we haven't really uh, you know told it to wait so over here we can do uh, you know other stuff so you can say you can do other stuff over here and as soon as it reaches a point where you cannot really move forward so you can say dispatch uh, group and then wait so now it's going to wait for a group which is actually currently in the loop and executing async operation and then the wait time can be dispatch time forever so it's going to wait forever for that particular block to return and then it will fire the display arrays so if I go ahead and run that right now you will see 
the, the display array is called at the end and the do something intensive, do something intensive, do something intensive three times are called and the display array is actually waiting for it to complete. So if you, um, there are times, uh, this can be performed of course asynchronously, okay, and uh, instead of you waiting, you can actually also use the notify, so whenever it is, uh, whenever it is, you know, complete, you will get a notification. So instead of doing this thing, uh, you can use uh, dispatch group notify and then it will notify you when the group is actually uh, done and then you can do a uh, same task over here which will be displaying the array right over here and it will have the same result all right but these operations are actually uh, what you're doing is you're waiting for the task to complete so if they are kind of like a uh, sync operation or synchronous not asynchronous operations and for uh, synchronous operations uh, you don't really need to do all that stuff okay you don't need really need to uh, create all that stuff to get it working so what I'm going to do is uh, let me just comment out over here Synchronous operation, I mean, the object of C does have some separate cool methods that you can use to do these tasks. Uh, apply method is one of them, which will actually uh, take in the iterations, which is the array count, which, uh, which we can say numbers and then uh, count um, Q. And then, so it's going to run on a block of uh, number of blocks it will run, and it will only return when the uh, when all the blocks are succeeded. So it's going to keep waiting till all the blocks are actually done. Okay. I think I'm missing this something or. So over here we can actually do the same thing and you can say do something intensive so self uh, and then do uh, something intensive or something uh, hold on a second I think I'm, uh, I missed out something over here but uh, dispatch apply so let's say dispatch underscore apply and uh, the iterations over here of course is the let me do it again uh, numbers count uh, the Q over here is of course we have already declared Q and the size of the block okay so this is important piece of information that you actually pass in uh, so let's go ahead and do that I'm gonna say it's a block and it will be size underscore t of index okay and um, and of course inside this you can do whatever you want let's say do uh, something intensive and then you pass in the uh, numbers and object at index because we already have the index in this case you can pass in the index and then finally uh, you can let me put this over here and finally when this so this will only return when all the blocks are completed and then after that you can simply say self uh, do you know or print array or whatever that function was display array and you can pass in the numbers um, of course this is uh, this is not really asynchronous because there's no version of dispatch underscore apply which is asynchronous but we can of course do that by using simply um, dispatch async right and you can pass in the queue and then the block and then in this block you can have this dispatch apply code and that will make it asynchronous okay and there you go so that's the uh, that's pretty much it so 
Of course, when you, we are talking about dependencies in concurrent programming, concurrent uh, using uh, GCD, uh, it's much better to look at the NS operation and NS operation queue uh, because it's a little bit higher layer above the GCD Grand Central Dispatch, which allows you to do uh, dependencies. And in the next screencast, I will cover that. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, one more thing that I like to uh, mention is supporting the screencast. Now, this channel is, of course, free. If you do want to support the screencast, uh, I recommend that you go to my website, azamsharp.com, and download my app or buy the app. Uh, you will get an app and I will get uh, something in return to continue making these screencasts. This is the app that I am I have right now which is Vegetable Tree. Um, you know and you can go ahead and uh, download this app. It will help you it will help you in your gardening needs. Uh, so hope I hope you support this screencast because uh, you know that's the only way to continue making these. Uh, screencast uh, as you can imagine it takes a lot of time and effort to create a single video uh, to convert it to HD and all that stuff so thank you very much uh, keep watching this Adam Sharp channel on YouTube and uh, keep supporting the screencast thank you very much